Hello world, I'm Grandcliff, and by the time this video is going up, it's less than two weeks until the head start of MapleStory 2. Yay! But while that's all well and good, there's something that you may want to keep in mind before you just jump into the game. Remember that your character's growth, in addition to being based on levels, is also based on attributes and skill points, which come from achievements. And despite Mush King Royale seeming pretty bare bones to many people, there's actually over 100 achievements you can get in the Royale Park and Mushtopia right now, and many of them are actually pretty easy to get. I mean, some of them are kind of dumb though, but you're going to need to amass lots of achievements, so you may as well get started now, right? Besides, many of these trophies can only be obtained in the Royale Park, a place that you're honestly never going to revisit, and grinding out these trophies will take up the time before the release anyway. And take up the time it will, because many of these achievements are here solely to waste your time. There are some pretty interesting ones, like getting a certain number of kills with a specific skill, but those aren't the ones we're going to be focusing on, especially with how dead the queues have been lately. So what can you get instead? First off is the A Walk in the Park Trophy series, which you can get up to 9 times by staying in the park for up to 30 hours. It sounds gargantuan, but no one said you had to actually be doing anything, so you can just leave your computer on overnight or something. Though if you're seriously going to do that, head on over to the Parion like mountain at the bottom right of the map and hitch a ride on this griffin with the action button. Doing so will allow you to work on the The View Up High trophies, which you can get up to 6 times by staying on the griffin's claw for up to 50 minutes. However, these two trophies can be worked on at any time, and because of that, are not the ones you really want to prioritize. There are a few trophy sets you'll want to focus on first. Combat trophies. Bomb diggity can be obtained up to 9 times and calls for you to throw 1,000 bombs. Here's the problem though, if someone else is already throwing all the bombs, you won't be able to progress through this trophy as fast, so it's best to work on this one when there isn't anyone else doing so. You can throw these bombs at a bunch of target enemies, sleepy shrooms and golden slimes. And by the way, why are the golden slimes the only slimes in the mushroom kingdom? Shouldn't they be mushrooms? Anyways, the who Needs Sleep trophy can be obtained up to 5 times with 100 Sleepy Shroom kills, and the Good as Gold trophy can be obtained up to 5 times with 100 Golden Slime kills as well. There's one last trophy you want to prioritize as other players can slow you down during it. Pop Goes the Mush King can be obtained up to 4 times by defeating the Inflatable Mush King on top of this tower 30 times. It goes down pretty quickly and makes an obnoxiously loud noise when it respawns, but at least this trophy should be over before you know it. Anyway, those are the trophies you'll want to focus on first, since they're slower to do when someone else is working on them as well. Once you've gotten that out of the way, what else can you do? Free climbing in Royale Park can be obtained up to 9 times by climbing up to 10 kilometers. The best place to do this is the tower on the leftmost part of the map. This one kind of bites because you can't speed it up by using up your stamina, and you do have to press the up button sometimes and the down button sometimes. Chitter Chatter can be obtained up to 9 times by talking to NPCs here 200 times. It doesn't matter who it is, so uh, pick your favorite NPC, I guess. Royale Park Scavenger can be obtained up to 5 times by opening up to 20 chests in the park. Each chest has a skill you can use, which might help you play with some classes that you may not have considered before, but they can't be used outside of the park, so don't worry about amassing large amounts of them. Royale Park Swim Club can be obtained up to 9 times by swimming up to 50 kilometers in the park. Uh, not gonna lie, this one is gonna take a very long time. You can hold down the basic attack button to swim faster, but it'll eat up your stamina. It's common to see people under the bridge swimming off the map repeatedly, probably because they've like taped down their left button or something. Now, those aren't all the trophies you can get right now, but these are the trophies you can get in the Royale Park, meaning that you can work on these no matter how dead the queues are. There are a plethora of trophies to obtain from the Royale itself, but that requires you to play well, get people to cooperate with you, and actually get in the Royale in the first place. There's a note I'd like to make about the Royale mounts that I've actually already said, but I think is worth repeating. The Flying Mushman is the fastest horizontal sky mount in the game right now. Now that's not to say it'll always be, but you'll have the best product of its kind for a while if you pick it up now. 15,000 coins is a very hefty price to pay though, like it took me like 50 hours of Royale or something, seriously, I don't know if I could recommend it. But I do know that some people are crazy enough to go for these things, and if you do, you will be sitting pretty for a long time. If you have bought or obtained a Founders Pack, you don't need any of the land mounts, as you'll be given a unicorn upon release. Still though, you get one unicorn, so if you plan on playing lots of alts, it might be nice to pick up something. Just uh, don't get the treasure chest if you want a mount for its usability. The treasure chest is bad, it's about as fast as walking, sure, but at least when you walk you have access to your class's innate movement skills. I guess that's what you should expect from a mount with a 1 star rating. Heck, it costs more than the zooming handcart despite being slower. So why did I get it? 
Uh, I like how it looks. But with all of that in mind, that's my advice for min-maxing to take up the time until the official release. Do I absolutely recommend you do all of this? Not really. If you're dedicated enough to the point where you want every advantage you can get, or if you're disgustingly bored and have no idea what to do while you wait for the official release, then sure, go ahead. But for the ordinary casual player, it's probably unnecessary. Though if you're looking for something to just take up the time, consider working with the UGC creator. That's the one thing I don't think is affected by the official release. That is to say, it already has all of the resources it needs as is, so you may as well create or commission your fashion now. That said, I do hope they give us more new models in the end, because man oh man does this priest hammer model suck. Though the books on the other hand, there's a lot of fun you can have with that. I made my holy scripture a subscribe button, which by the way, is what you should click on if you want to see more MapleStory 2 content. <laughs> but anyways, I'm Brancliffe. Goodbye everyone.